Hi everyone and welcome to this video on local webhook development using the Ooktec CLI. Now one major requirement when you're working with webhooks is that you need an HTTPS endpoint to point your webhook requests to. Now when you're doing local development, you're mostly doing it on your system. So you're doing it on a local host URL, but you also want to work with webhooks because you don't want you don't have that code base in production yet. You need a way to receive your webhooks locally so that you can make sure that your code responds appropriately to the webhooks you want to process. But with the requirement of having an HTTPS URL, this might be a bit difficult to achieve. Now, most of the time we see a lot of people using ng rock, but that has its own limitations as it's not totally designed to be used for webhooks. It's for is more generalistic it can be used for any project now we at ookdeck have realized this and that is why we have created the ookdeck cli that is fashioned to help you work with webhooks on your local development machine and in this video we're going to be using the ookdeck cli to receive webhooks from a shopify store locally and also inspect the payload that comes with the webhook request Without much ado, let's get right into that. And the first step we're going to be taking is to install the Ookdeck CLI. To do that, I'm just going to pull my browser up. If you go to ookdeck.com, there's a CLI section in the docs. So you just click on CLI and you are immediately taken to the installation page. And you can install this Ookdeck CLI on your macOS, Windows, or Linux machines. I'm currently using macOS, so I'm going to be running the command brew install ookdeck forward slash ookdeck forward slash ookdeck but if you're using windows or you're on linux you also have instructions here in the documentation on how to install the ookdeck cli on your system now i have already run this command because it can take a while as we know with all brew commands brew first has to update and that can take a while before the main installation starts so i have already run this command on my ios machine and i have the ookdeck cli installed to confirm that the Ookdeck CLI is already operating on your machine after installation, you need to pull up your CLI and run the command Ookdeck version. And if you get the version of your CLI that your Ookdeck CLI printed, then you know that you have Ookdeck installed on your machine. As at the time of recording this video, the version I'm working with is 0.3, as you can see. Now, yours might be different, but I'm definitely sure you'll still be able to achieve the same thing I would achieve in this video. So now that we've confirmed that we have Ookdeck installed on our system, let's get right into the demo in this video. So I have a Shopify store where I have a cake, and I'm going to set up webhooks from the Shopify store. And when the webhook requests are sent, I want to get them locally and be able to inspect the payload in my webhooks. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a local server. So you need a local server running on your system that you're going to tunnel the webhook request to. Uh, for this demo, I'm using the open source Node.js webhook server example, which is on the Ookdeck repo. You can get this and just clone it. It's a very, very simple API. If we go to server.js, you will see the code. Very simple bit of code. Uh, this is the server. And if we go back and go to the routes, it contains a route specifically designed for our webhooks. As you can see, this is a post route that goes to an endpoint called Shopify-webhooks-endpoint. And I have it cloned onto my system here in VS Code. As you can see the code. And this is the endpoint. This is the endpoint that we're going to be working with. This is the endpoint that we're going to be pointing the webhook requests to. It simply just console the logs, uh, rather just logs the body of the request to the console and sends a successful response. So we have this on our system and we need to get it running. So to run this server, I'm just going to go to my CLI. I'm currently at the root of the server. So I'm just going to clear just to make sure I have a clean CLI and run node server. And I have the success message printed on the screen that says server running on localhost 1337. So our server is running and I want you to mark this port because we will need it for the Ookdeck CLI tunneling. So with our server running, let's open another terminal. I have another terminal opened here. In another terminal, you can then run the command Ookdeck login. 
So we're going to UGDEC login and we hit enter. Get that process started. This is going to open our browser, but there's also another mode which, which you can run this command where you buy, you just pass an API key so that you don't have to use a browser. But for now, we're going to be opening the browser because we have access to a browser and I'm just going to hit enter to make that happen. So once the browser is opened, you ensure that in your browser, you're already logged into the, your UGDEC account. Now, if you're not logged into your UGDEC account, it would prompt you to log into your UGDEC account. So you do that, then you come back to the CLI and run this command again. Come back to the CLI and run this command again so that you can get a successful output in the browser just as I have here. Now that we have, um, or rather, now that we are logged into our UGDEC account, the next thing to do is to channel our webhook requests to our local server using UGDEC. And to do that, we're going to run the command UGDEC, listen, and I'm going to supply the port for the server. That's 1337, the port on which the server is running right here. So UGDEC, listen, 1337 and we hit enter this is going to give us an interactive cli it's first going to ask if we have a source that is uh, do we have a, an existing connection i already have a connection named shopify but for the purpose of this demo i'm going to create a new one so i'm just going to go uh, to the create new source option and hit enter then it, it prompts me to provide a label for my source i'll just say shopify 2 I'm still using Shopify, so I'll just say Shopify 2. Hit enter to confirm that. Then it asks me what part should the webhooks be forwarded to. Now, this is the part on my local server where the webhooks should be forwarded to. And if we go back to VS Code, if we go check that in VS Code, I want it to be forwarded to this endpoint. So the endpoint slash Shopify dash webhooks slash endpoint, that's where I want to forward my webhook request to. So I'm just going to copy that and head back to the CLI. So supply that endpoint and hit enter. Then I'm being prompted again, what should be my connection label? For this, you can just give any descriptive name that represents what you're trying to do. I'm just going to say my local webhooks server. Hit enter to confirm that. And yeah, we are ready. The CLI says it's ready and we can always hit Control C to quit the process, but the CLI is currently ready. Now, one thing to really note on the CLI output is this webhook URL. This webhook URL is going to be the URL that will be supplied to Shopify. So when we are setting up the Shopify webhook and it asks us for a target endpoint, this is the HTTPS URL that we are going to supply. So just copy this and have it stored somewhere. So our next task is to go to our Shopify store and set up a webhook. So we're just going to go to Firefox and I'm going to go to my admin page on my Shopify store. Look for settings, which is on the left hand side here at the bottom. Click on settings, go to notifications. The notifications page, I'm just going to scroll down to webhooks. Now here on the webhook section, I'm going to create a new webhook by clicking the create webhook button. I want webhooks for when my cart is updated. I want it in JSON format. Now this URL is where you supply the URL that we just copied from the CLI. That is the webhook URL that the CLI printed. So we have this and this is okay. We can use the latest version of the webhook uh, API for Shopify. Then we click save webhook. So we have that saved, it's all good. We have it here, cat update webhook. It points to our endpoint, the one that the CLI generated for us. So now going back to the CLI, confirm that it's ready, connections are ready. So I can simply go to my store on the product page, click on a product. I'm going to click on the chocolate glazed cake. Then I'm going to add it to cat. Then go to my cart and view it. Okay, I was having a demo of this before, so my cart currently contains <laughs> a quantity five, but we can, that, that's simply okay. Our webbox is going to fire when we update the cart. So if I change this to, let's say four, 
we should have a webhook request sent to the URL that we defined. So let's go to our CLI and see if there's any activity. And as you can see, yep, we have something here. We have two requests and we can simply copy. If you look at this, the structure of this printout, you have the status code, which is 200. We have the request method, which is post. You have the source. That's where we're forwarding all our webhooks to. That's local host 1337 Shopify webhooks endpoint. Then you have this pipe. And immediately after that, we have this URL, this HTTPS URL that points to the hook deck dashboard. Now, this URL is the URL you can use to inspect the payload of your webhook request. We are successfully getting webhook requests on our local machine, as you can see, based on this printout on the CLI. To view the payload, you simply copy the URL. It's the last item in the string. You copy the URL, the HTTPS URL that points to the hook deck dashboard and then we can go to our browser just click on an empty tab or just use an existing tab we don't need this tab anymore and just paste that in there paste it in hit enter and just wait for our details so these are the details of the cat update that we just received what you're mostly going to be interested in here is the body so you can go to the body and click on this plus sign for the root and it just simply exposes all the properties of the request body. We have the ID for the cart update. We have the token, the time created, and we can look at the cart line items in the cart, which simply contains the glazed cake. If we scroll down, we have 24 items inside here, or rather 24 properties inside this single cart item. And from there, we can see the new quantity, which is four. We can see the unit price, which is $20. Scroll down and see the total price, which is the original line price, $80. That's cool. If I go back to the cart, let's go back to the cart and change this to three. Let's reduce it to three. Then go to our CLI. You see another request has been fired with this new entry. And we can click this or copy this. Now this URL changes. As you can see, if you look at this URL, you look at the one that precedes it and the very first one, they're all different. So you don't have this. This is not a single place to view all your outputs. There's a unique URL for each and every webhook that you get. So you copy this URL, you copy the new one, the latest one, paste it in the browser, hit enter to load it up. And then we get our updated details. So I can click this once again and go back to the line items. And this time when I check the quantity, the quantity is three and the price is now $60. As you've seen in this video, we have been able to successfully receive web hooks on our local development machine. And with the hook deck CLI, we also get a URL whereby we can inspect the payload of our web hooks. Now this completely changes the game when it comes to web hooks development, as you can now receive web hooks on your local machine and write code to properly undo your web hook requests. If you have found this video useful, please click the like button and also subscribe to the Oak Deck channel for more videos on working with webhooks. Thanks and see you next time.